In this video, we're going to quickly have a look at debugging in Android Studio. So obviously somewhere in your application, you'll get to a point where your application gives you an exception or it gives you some sort of error and you can't figure out the error. So you need to do some debugging. So if I open up my program now, it's the same program that we created in the previous video. Uh, it's basically just where we left off. If I just click on the submit button now, you can see it says, unfortunately, ID information has stopped. Now that's an exception that has been thrown. So if I go back to Android Studio and you click on the Android monitor at the bottom and you open up this a bit, just make it a bit bigger. You will see that somewhere along the line, there was an exception that caused my application to stop. It says it's a fatal exception. So the first thing of your debugging uh, process will be to actually go to the Android monitor, to the locket, and go and have a look at what happened there. Maybe you, you can figure out what happened right in this part there. So you'll see it says it starts off with an illegal state exception, could not execute the method on click. So we know when we click the button, something went wrong. That's caused by an invocation target exception. Don't know what that is. And then when you go to the last exception that it shows there, it's caused by a string index out of bounds exception. Okay, so this exception base or this uh, line in the locket tells me it's a string out of bound exception and it will be basically at this line number 27. So how do I get to my main activity in line 27? So if you close this down now and you right click in that gray area, you can say show the line numbers. So if I need to go to line 27, it means it's this line of coding that's giving me the problem. And if it says it's the index out of bounds exception, then probably I'm trying to extract the string uh, from character zero up until six not included, but that specific string does not contain that number of characters. So now if it's, if it's not clear to you that what, is, what has actually happened there, so if I run this application again, you will see it's because we entered nothing there. And if I click on submit, it's nothing on which I tried to get the substring. So obviously it's going to throw an exception. But it's, if this is difficult for you to sort out, and maybe it could be something a bit more complicated, there's also a few other steps that we can take to see what is going on in our coding and what is, what is giving us this problem. So now from the exception, I know that it's at line 27. So let's say we want the compiler now or the debugger now to stop at this specific line. So you can see we can add a line breakpoint by just clicking next to the line number. Then it adds a breakpoint. Now, if you want to debug your application, I'm just going to click on OK there. Instead of clicking on the green play button, we can click on the debug button. So if you click on it, it gives you the choice again on which uh, virtual device to run it. And it will just set up everything for you and launch the activity. And you can see that the virtual device is waiting for the debugger. Let's just wait for it to run. And then the application starts. So what is this breakpoint now? As soon as I click the button on this application, it will go into this method. And when it gets to this line, it will stop execution of the application. And we can then step through every part of it. So let's click that button again. I click on submit and you can see the application stopped right there. And there already I can see that what is saved in data at this stage is nothing. Okay, so this is a nice indication again. Data is nothing. And when I try to get a substring on that data that's nothing, it will throw me an exception. So if by now you didn't find the error, you should have found it by, by, by looking at this one line. And then if I click on going to the next one, step into, you'll see basically my whole debug process is stopped now because now my application is thrown in the, the exception again. Okay, so that's just a normal line break. So let's say I'm going to leave that breakpoint there. Let's say for now, let's run it again. Let's run it again quickly on the phone. Now let's say I'm going to add some values now there. I'm going to add something, let's, let's say, um, 
doesn't matter. Let me just have enough characters there. So if I click submit now, you'll see it stops and it gets to this line. And there you can see there's data entered now. So in data, this value has been stored. So to get the substring now won't be a problem. So if I say step into, you can see it carries on to the next line. And in that next line, it gives you that data that I used there is still the same data that I had there at the top. And you can see the extraction of the date of birth will be only the first six characters. Okay, so this gives you a nice indication of is your program actually doing what it's supposed to do? Is it working correctly? So this again is a line break. So I'm going to stop execution of the application. Your, your uh, breakpoints, if you want to remove them, you can just click on it again and it will be removed. So this is a normal line break. Then you can also go to your run method. And in your run method, if you go down, you'll see there's a toggle method breakpoint and a to toggle temporary line breakpoint. So if you click on toggle temporary line uh, breakpoint, that breakpoint will basically will basically just be a temporary breakpoint, which means that if you run your application in the debug mode and it gets to this line, it's going to stop execution of your application and it will let you step through. But if it goes, if it comes to this one again, the second time it comes to this break, let's say you're in a loop and you want to stop again there, that breakpoint will be removed. So that's the difference between it difference between a temporary one and a normal line break then you can also get a method break but you can see the method breakpoints it gives you a warning there may dramatically slow down the debugging process because it stops your application right at the, the beginning of the method and it also stops your application at the end of the method so it could really slow down your debugging process but if you, if you add your method breakpoint there, it will basically stop execution of your application and then you can step through it as soon as it gets to the method. And again, to remove it, you can just click on it. Now, the last thing and last breakpoint that we can do is a conditional breakpoint. So let me illustrate this in the printout that we've got right at the bottom. So let's say you click your normal breakpoint there and then right click it to get the conditional breakpoint. So add a condition basically to this breakpoint. So let's say you want to only have this breakpoint where the gender is equal to male. So we could do this thing. We can say where S gender, you can see there, and S gender is a string, so we need to use the equals method. If the S gender equals male, which we basically have there. So if it's a male, then we want to have the breakpoint here and we want to stop at this specific position. If it's not a male, we will just skip this breakpoint and every time the button gets clicked, it just goes over the code. So we can say done now. If I say done then, this breakpoint, it will only stop here, stop execution of the program here, if the gender equals male. So let's say done again. And let's run it quickly on the virtual device. We're waiting for the debugger. Right, there we go. So let's add an ID number. Okay, so remember that that character there is basically, or that number there will be the gender. So if it's a male, so let's make it female first. So we make it a four, which means that the breakpoint will not be reached. So let's click on submit and see. You can see it printed out. It did not stop the execution of the program. And you can see it's female. So now if I change that four to a five, which means it's now male, and I click on submit, you can see it stops ex execution of your program. So that's a conditional format or the conditional breakpoint to, to add a specific condition. So your conditions could be basically any Boolean expression there. So we could say, for instance, Let's look at the nationality, for instance. We can also say if the nationality is equal to 1, for example, if you're looking at the integer value of 1 for the nationality there. So it depends on what you want to do, but you can also create a conditional breakpoint. And that's it for debugging your application. I hope that you will not have problems throughout this year.